Today, we've got lots of news on the whole Galaxy S24 series, including upgrades to the display and cameras, and thankfully for a change, it's all good news. Let me know in the comments who out there is excited for the Samsung Galaxy S24, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech. So last week, we spoke about the Galaxy S24 Ultra having a new flat display instead of a curved one, and multiple sources are now confirming that it is going to be the case. Although I'm actually a fan of the curved displays, the flat display is going to help with usability and especially help when you're going to the edge of the screen using an S Pen, and the bezels are also going to be the same thickness around the whole of the display, and multiple sources including Ice Universe have confirmed that the peak brightness is now going to be an impressive 2500 nits. Now we're also hearing of improved charge speeds to the S24 Ultra, but we're still waiting on the exact confirmation of numbers. Now a great way to charge all of your electronics quickly though is today's video sponsor, the Ugreen Nexode 300W 5-port GAN Fast Charger. With a whopping 300 watts of power, this is the most powerful charger that we've ever showcased on the channel. We've got 5 ports in total, 4 USB-C and then 1 USB-A, and with the Power Delivery 3.1 protocol, it supports a wide range of voltages for all of your electronics, and you can charge a 16-inch MacBook Pro in just under 1.5 hours. It can charge 5 devices simultaneously with a total output power of 300 watts, and we've also got a dedicated port for 140 watts of power. It contains advanced GAN and SIC chips along with its thermal guard system, and this monitors temperature in real time, taking over 6,000 temperature readings a minute, so you know your electronics are safe and secure. The Nexode 300 w really is the only charger you'll ever need for all of your devices, and of course, the links are down in the description below, so go ahead and check it out now. Now back to the S24, we also get a camera upgrade for the S24 Ultra, and it's still going to be a 200 megapixel primary sensor, just an improved one. Ice Universe tweeted to advise that we're going to be seeing the 200 megapixel HP2SX sensor in the Ultra, and put in simple terms, it's an improved version of the HP2 in the current Ultra. It's a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor with 0.6 micrometer pixels, so it's the same size and not the 1 inch sensor we were hoping for, but hopefully we still get plenty of improvements to photography and video. We've also had lots of shocking rumors that the Exynos 2400 was making a comeback in the Galaxy S24 series, but thankfully it's not going to be in the Ultra. Samsung pleased fans globally last year when they switched to Qualcomm Snapdragon chips instead of the Exynos, and the news of Exynos returning was upsetting for those affected. Now, the Exynos chip is still going to be used in the Galaxy S24 as well as the S24 Plus in certain regions, but the Galaxy S24 Ultra is going to use the Snapdragon only for all models in all regions, and this makes sense as it's the Ultra most premium model. Now, for those who want the S24 Plus, we've also got some great news from Ice Universe that we're finally getting an upgrade from Full HD to Quad HD. He tweeted to advise the exact resolution is going to be 3120 by 1440, and that's a big step up from the 2340 by 1080 we've got in the current model. So for those who want a little bit more detail on the display, then this is going to make them happy. And we've also got news that we'll be seeing a redesign on the S24 and the S24 Plus on top of these new improved displays. The front and rear are going to look very similar to what we've got on the current models, but they'll also be changing to a flat edge design. Now the news again comes from Reliable Leaker Ice Universe and he's provided these photos, but the photos are actually of the Meizu 20, but they do give you an idea of what to expect. But basically, with this new design, what you can expect is something that looks like the S23, but it's got the sides of an iPhone 14. We've also got a new concept trailer published by 4RMD on YouTube, and he's showing us the Galaxy S24 Ultra with a new flat edge titanium design. Now, Ice Universe made no mention of the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but now we've got a flat display, maybe it could be something similar. Ice Universe also tweeted to give us a good idea of what the Galaxy S24 models are going to look like side by side, as well as confirming the display sizes and the resolutions. Now, for those excited for the Samsung Galaxy S24 series, though, we're now going to run through the full specs, design, and the pricing to help you guys decide which one is right for you. For my regular viewers, you guys have seen this, so just skip to the next video. But if you're new here, then hit subscribe now and we'll get right into it. Now, the standard Galaxy S24 is coming with a 6.1 inch 100. 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display. We get a resolution of 2340 by 1080 and it's going to be using Samsung's new M13 OLED panels protected by Gorilla Glass Victus 2. 
we get a 12 megapixel punch hole camera for the selfies, then on the rear it's a 50 megapixel primary camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10 megapixel telephoto, and of course it's going to be powered up by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in South Korea and USA, while European users are going to be getting the Exynos 2400. We get 12 gigabytes of RAM and a choice of 256 or 512 gig storage, and this is going to be a UFS 4.1. It comes with a 3,900 milliamp hour battery, and while fast charging is still unknown, we're hoping to see an upgrade to something like 40 watts, but we do know that we're getting 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi Fi 7. Now it's coming with One UI 6 based on Android 14, and it's expected to launch from about $850 to $900, and that's going to be in February 2024. Now next up, we've got the Galaxy S24 Plus with a 6.7 inch 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display. We get an upgraded Quad HD Plus resolution of 3120 by 1440 and it's going to be using Samsung's new M13 OLED panel and again protected by Gorilla Glass Victus 2. We get a 12 megapixel punch hole camera for the selfies, then on the rear again it's a 50 megapixel primary, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10 megapixel telephoto. It's going to be powered up by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in South Korea and USA, and again, Europe users are going to get the Exynos 2400, and again, we get 12 gigabytes of RAM, and then the choice of 256 or 512 storage, which will be UFS 4.1. It comes with a 4700 milliamp hour battery, and while fast charging again is unknown, we're hoping to see an upgrade to something like 40 watts, and again, we get 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7. It's coming with One UI 6 based on Android 14, and it's expected to launch from about $1,050. Now finally, we've got the most premium, the Galaxy S24 Ultra. And with the S24 Ultra, we've got a 6.8 inch 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display. It's got a resolution of 3088 by 1440, and again, it's using Samsung's new M13 OLED panel, protected by Gorilla Glass Victus 2. We get a 12 megapixel punch hole camera for the selfies, then on the rear it's a 200 megapixel primary camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, we get a 50 megapixel 3x telephoto as well as a 10 megapixel telephoto with 10x optical zoom. Despite previous rumours, it's going to be powered up by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in all regions and it's only the S24 and the S24 Plus that are still going to be using the Exynos. And with the S24 Ultra, we get 16GB of RAM with up to 1TB of storage and of course it's UFS 4.1. It comes with a 5000mAh battery and while fast charging is still unknown, when it comes to the Ultra, we're hoping for an upgrade of something closer to 60 watts. And we're also going to get 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi Fi 7. Now it's coming with One UI 6 based on Android 14, and it's expected to launch from $1,250. So overall, the Samsung Galaxy S24 series is going to be a nice upgrade in terms of design and hardware. It's going to be interesting to see how people react to such a drastic change as a flat display on the S24 Ultra, but a new design on the S24 and the S24 Plus is going to be refreshing to see. Now I think keeping the Snapdragon chip for all models in the Ultra was actually a very sensible move from Samsung, and those buying the S24 or the S24 Plus don't necessarily demand the best of everything, so I can't see them being bothered about an Exynos chipset. Now of course it was still quite away from the official launch, so leaks can be a little inaccurate or based from prototypes that never make it to mass production, but I'm going to continue to update you as any more news comes in. But thanks for watching today's video and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech.